Warning, the information in this video are based off internet rumors and rumors from the street and not actual facts. Previews from the first Chirac Street legend on McAdoo 600. McAdoo comes from that 600 set. McAdoo was real, real cool with Scrap. And McAdoo even said himself that King Von was his only big homie. McAdoo had a name in the streets and it wasn't for no reason. Two gunmen hopped out, one going to the driver's side and one going to the passenger side. When it's all said and done, nobody ends up winning. That was a lot that I didn't speak on in the first video that I did about McAdoo. Well, this is the reloaded version, so buckle your seatbelts. It's going to be a wild ride. As I said in the first video, McAdoo was undoubtedly one of the deadliest members in 600. He's allegedly been on hits with King Von and HK. It's rumored that he went with HK on the Kobe and Brick hit, and he also allegedly was one of the shooters on the TB hit. FBG Brick was definitely a problem for the other side. He was a very well-respected member who was rumored to not only do hits, but orchestrate them as well. Being in trouble basically all his life, he was kind of like AWACS for menace to society. He was satisfied just to see the younger guys put in work. And he definitely was no stranger to the system. He was locked up for the first time at the age of nine. He gave his ops hell inside and outside the walls. But on July 17th, 2017, by chilling on his own block, FBG Brick and his cousin Kobe lost their lives. Two men were shot and killed Monday afternoon in the Southside Woodlawn neighborhood. Officers responded to a shooting about 2.50 p.m in the 6300 block of South St. Lawrence and found one man in front of a home with a gunshot wound to the head and a second man in the back gangway with gunshot wounds to the back and arm, according to Chicago police. Stanley Jacoby Mack, 31, and Jermaine Robinson, 26, were pronounced dead at the scene, according to the Cook County Medical Examiner's Office. Mack lived in the West Side Austin neighborhood and Robinson lived in the South Shore neighborhood. Autopsies Tuesday found both men died of multiple gunshot wounds and their deaths were ruled homicide, according to the medical examiner's office. According to Mama Duck, Brick was actually only in town for his son's baby shower. and He was gonna stay in the house that day, but a friend called him to come out. Brick agreed, but was supposed to go to Mama Duck's house. They never made it to Mama Duck's house. They ended up on 63rd. Before everything happened, cop pulled up and asked for Duck. Brick knew who the person was and spoke to him for a minute. Shortly after that, a car zoomed up the one way. Allegedly, the first guy that hopped out went straight for Brick, but Kobe Mack jumped in the way. Him and the guy ended up tussling for the gun. Trying to get the gun, Kobe ended up shot in the face. He died on the spot. Brick tried to run through a gangway, but got to a fence that was locked. He ended up being hit trying to jump the fence. He was hit six times. Twice in his back, twice in his butt, once in his arm, and once point blank range under his eye. Mama Duck made it clear that she think that somebody was waiting on the other side of the gate for Brick. Oh, he is in the alley. When we came up that way. Yeah, he's like in the gangway. He in the gangway right there. TB or T Biko or something like to call Terry Berry was also one of the guys that lost his life that they say McAdoo had something to do with. His death was reportedly get back for what he did to T-Roy. He lost his life on 70th and Chappelle. According to rumors, TB was backdoored by East End. 
And there was a message sent by HK to Lil D, letting him know that he knew exactly what TB was and that he was eventually gonna slide on TB. TB was chilling on the porch on Chappelle when all of a sudden, two guys hopped out and they ended up overkilling TB. He had a gunshot wound to the right ear, behind the right ear, right neck, out of side of right shoulder, out of side of right tricep, out of side of right forearm, front of right shoulder, mid right back, lower left back, lower right abdomen, lower left flank, front of left ear, and numerous fragments and wounds and graze wounds on the side of the head and face. It was also said that the shooters reloaded their guns and started shooting them again. I have shot multiple, multiple times. Critical condition. Location is that? At 34, a good address is going to be what? 45 on the front porch, uh, a couple to the head, one to the neck, arm, head, and the uh, boy don't have an that's where he was when he was shot. Be uh, advised, uh, victim on the porch is extremely, extremely critical. In 2017, McAdoo and HK grew very close. They were doing a lot of hits together until HK ended up losing his life. McAdoo and Lil D was present when this happened, so a lot of people thought that McAdoo had backdoored HK, but that wasn't the case. HK tried to rob a civilian, and they ended up in a gunfight, and he ended up losing his life. I think that a lot of people from O Block kind of blame McAdoo for allowing that to happen and for leaving HK after the fact. On November 24th, 2017, a 22-year-old man suffered multiple gunshot wounds to the body and was taken to Northwestern Memorial Hospital where he was pronounced dead. No witnesses to the killing had been located by about 10 p.m., police said. HK was accompanied by McAdoo and Lil D from 600 when they attempted to rob Jackson because they were thirsty for weed money. Guns were drawn after the victim pleaded that he didn't gangbang. The victim, Jackson, ended up in a gun exchange with HK and HK was hit. The three ran down the stairwell where HK collapsed. They tried to drag him out of the building and outside the apartment so he could get treated for his wound. HK ended up dying to his wound. McAdoo and Lil D were listed as suspects for a while because they committed an attempted robbery with HK, which gets them charged for the murder according to the law. Jackson had an FOID card issued in April of 2017. He was a legal gun owner. So no, McAdoo and Lil D did not snake HK. And McAdoo tried to tell everyone that accused him of it the truth, but they didn't believe him. Now it is confirmed by the paperwork of the HK murder that him indeed did not kill HK. McAdoo was found dead in his cell two days ago, and I'm not sure what drugs he did that caused him to overdose, but I'm willing to bet that whatever he did probably was laced with fentanyl. It's a real epidemic going around with people dying off of fentanyl, and fentanyl is laced and almost everything that you could take these days. So y'all be careful out there. Anything that I left out of this video is gonna be on video one that I did on McAdoo. And I did compress that video with this video. So y'all have a nice watch. If you haven't seen the first video, just keep on watching. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. It's your boy, SNTV. I'm out. on my stick. <laughs> what well down, family? It's your boy, SNTV. Back at y'all with another Chirac Street Legends. And this episode is going to be about none other than 600 McAdoo, a.k.a. McAdoo you. <laughs> That's some shooters on my squad. That's some shooters on my squad. All oh, my niggas shoot like oh, Ray Ray. <laughs> McAdoo comes from that 600 set. They BDs. 
located on 59th and 60th King Drive. They clicked up with Old Block and Front Street and cool with certain members from Folly Boys, Nico Gang, Lamron, and 4 6. They beef with Gyro City, Taekwon World, STL, EBT, and their main beef is with MOB slash 051. Those sets are clicked up and both have bodies on 600. Even though Chicago is a very large city, it mainly boils down to everybody knowing everybody. So before the war between MOB and 600, McAdoo was real, real cool with Scrap. They actually used to go to school together. And according to sources, Scrap and McAdoo were best friends. It's been said that at once upon a time, these two were inseparable. And neither one of their sets really liked the fact that they were hanging with each other. They've even took up for each other in certain situations. It wasn't until body started to drop that they had to pick a side. Scrap staying in MOB territory and Max staying in 600 territory, they ended up choosing the side that they were closest to, which would only make sense. It was also said that McAdoo and the legendary K.I. was once in a relationship. She was thought to act more like a female, but according to McAdoo, they were never in a relationship. They were just friends at one point in time. She seen that McAdoo was a street dude and started looking up to him. And according to him, he taught her a lot about the streets. Later on, she would end up flipping. Eventually, she would end up turning from Kyra to K.I. And her and McAdoo could be seen arguing on the internet. A lot of people say that K.I. in real life wasn't really a threat. But I seriously doubt that. Specifically because the ops wanted to see her dead so bad. It's also been said that King Von and McAdoo were very close. When King Von would take sticks away from Old Block, McAdoo was one of the main guys that he would go kick it with. It was also said by King Von in one of his songs that him, LA, M Thang, and McAdoo slid the Dunbar and shot it up one time. And McAdoo even said himself that King Von was his only big homie. It's a well known fact that 600 was known for rapping. But it's also a well-known fact that rapping was the only thing that they were known for. They were also known for getting out in the streets. And they've made a lot of mothers cry. And they've received just as well as they've given. 600 had a lot of guys that were willing to put in work. And some of them were rappers. But most of them weren't. McAdoo was never a rapper. But he would always end up in rap songs. I heard E-Day say that anybody who had a name in 600 earned their name. McAdoo had a name in the streets and it wasn't for no reason. Now that everything is coming out, we're now learning that allegedly McAdoo was if not the biggest shooter in 600, was definitely one of them. No, man, where you at man, where McAdoo at? You on deck with McAdoo? Right Put Mac on the phone, let him talk his shit to him, full of them. Bruno on the same deck in that bitch, I'm full of terrorizing. Man, no, shit gang shit, man. No. What you say, bro? Hold on, hold on, bro. What you say, bro? Shit gang shit, you know? Pretty gang shit, man, you know? 322, you know? Y'all watch it, man. Give me kids, you know? Hey, free Mac on full of them. No screws in that bitch. Nah, we ain't no new screws, yeah, man. We nailed them little bitches, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking super savage, man. Don't die. Shit. Shit. Uh -huh. I think my teeth are because it's in that. You want to Oh, Steve, is going to get my back. You got to talk. Hey, my 20 on this. It's a brand new 20, bro. You want shit in my face. Yeah, yeah, Come on, man. 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 Hey, that's why I shoot dice.
on June 28th, 2017, at about 10.30 p.m., Janine Dow, a.k.a. White Girl, and Juliet Washington, a.k.a. TT, were sitting at a red light on Wabash Avenue and Garfield Boulevard. They were waiting on the light to turn green. When a gray sedan pulled up behind them, two gunmen hopped out, one going to the driver's side and one going to the passenger side. One gunman fired 14 times at the driver and the other gunman fired eight times at the passenger, killing both occupants. A driver who was across the intersection and witnessed the shooting followed the gray sedan as it escaped. A half a mile later, they stopped at an apartment building. The police were then directed to the car less than two minutes after the shooting. According to police, DNA was recovered from the passenger side door that matched Scud, and fingerprints were recovered from the door on the driver's side that matched McAdoo. There is also surveillance footage and witness statements implicating them. At a hearing for McAdoo, prosecutors said that 15 calls were made to a person that faced charges of aggravated battery against Dow, which was white girl. So basically, the police are saying that they believe that McAdoo was paid to do the hit on white girl. It would eventually come out that it was video footage and a lot of people willing to testify. Allegedly, one of those guys were real close to O-Block and 600. As a matter of fact, one of those guys turned out to be O-Block. And it's been said that Trey Five was telling and that he made a whole statement about the situation. Statement of Blank. Blank related that on the night of the murders, he was in a park located at the Parkway Gardens housing complex. Blank related that at approximately 22.50 hours, he received a call from Machiavelle Sampson, who Blank refers to as Mac. Sampson told Blank to pick him up for 58th and Calumet. Blank stated there were multiple phone calls between him and Sampson. Blank stated his phone number is Blank. Blank stated he drove to 58th and Calumet with Blank as a passenger. Blank stated the white Chevrolet Malibu is the same vehicle he was driving when he was arrested in Lincoln. Stated he observed several police cars on Calumet Avenue. Blank stated that Sampson entered the near driver side door of the vehicle. Blank stated that Sampson told Blank that they caught someone on 55th and Wabash. Blank related he knew Cart meant to shoot someone. Sampson, Blank, that it was white girl. Blank knew white girl to be Janine Dow. Blank stated Sampson then told him to slide by 55th and Wabash. Blank stated they drove past the crime scene and observed a large group of people, police, vehicles, and crime scene tape. Blank stated then he drove back to Parkway Gardens where Blank and Sampson went their separate ways. Blank stated he saw on Facebook that white girl, aka Janine Dow, had been killed at 55th and Wabash. So basically what's being said in the statement is, is that after everything took place, McAdoo called somebody to come and pick him up. They drove back over to the crime scene to make sure that the job was done. Some people say that the hit that McAdoo and Scud allegedly did on White Girl and TT was kind of like killing two birds with one stone. Because White Girl was also MOB, as MOB definitely claimed her after her death. And they made a lot of posts honoring her and saying that 600 was actually bogus for doing this hit and that they wasn't going to get no points for it. And I think that what we can learn from the story of 600 McAdoo is this. Normally, when you have something that's in motion, if order isn't applied to that motion, or there's no structure there, there'll be total chaos. And within total chaos, people lose their lives and a lot of things happen that we just can't predict. Something that's in motion stays in motion until it's met by equal or dominant force. Unfortunately, that dominant force that usually stops dudes that's in the streets is a pistol 
or the police. If it wasn't for the beef between MOB 600 and the surrounding areas, a lot of people's lives may have been different. But when the beef took place, everybody had to pick a side. And this is what separated a lot of the friendships. It's better not to even get caught up in it. Because at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, nobody ends up winning. This has been another episode of Shyrock Street Legends. It's your boy, SNTV.